Hello, everyone. This is Pastor John from Portland Metro Church. It's Sunday, November 22nd, 2020. And today we're talking about from the book of Daniel. Daniel teaches us how to pray. If you have your Bibles and want to turn to Daniel's, Daniel's books, chapters uh, 9 and 10, we will begin uh, talking through those in just a couple of minutes. Even if you want to read those two chapters or Daniel chapter 9 verses 1 through 19 and Daniel chapter 10 verses 1 through 21, then we will uh, dive into them in just a couple of minutes. So if you want to hit pause, all that good stuff, that'd be great. But let's pray together right now, shall we? Father, we thank you for this time in your word. Lord, we thank you for Daniel that teaches us how to pray. And, and Lord, we want to just even pray right now for the unity of your church, that all the churches that preach the the clear gospel of Jesus Christ would be united all across the world in our city, God, and in our country as well. We pray for a spiritual awakening for Portland, Oregon, and for the United States of America. Oh God, we, we pray that every lie will be exposed and, and everything that comes against you and your kingdom will be torn down and removed. Lord, we pray for healing and protection from the coronavirus. We pray, Lord, that you will remove it. Lord, as we repent, would you come and heal our land? We also pray for peace. Lord, we pray for resolve of the civil unrest that's happening in our city and, and many cities across America. We pray for peace, God. We pray for, for the Holy Spirit to come and bring peace. Lord, we also pray for wisdom and grace for our leaders, both here locally in Portland, our mayor, our governor over the state of Oregon. And then, oh God, we pray for our president and his family. Bless them, anoint them, and, and guide them, we pray in Jesus' name. Bless our time in your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we uh, are reading and studying the book of Daniel, we've seen that Daniel was indeed a powerful man of prayer. Uh, he had spent most of his life in exile in the service of three uh, different kings uh, in the city of Babylon. And he was associated with many prominent and powerful and sometimes popular people. We've also seen that during this very uh, severe testing. Every time Daniel was tested, it seemed to be a severe kind of test. And he always remained faithful to God. And friends, that is a powerful lesson just in itself, that when the storms of life rage and when the enemy attacks and when trials and tests come, we remain faithful to our God. That kind of brings us to the question, can a person be a Christian in business, in politics, in college, uh, in the workplace? And the answer is yes. And Daniel shows us what it takes to be a believer uh, and be in the secular setting. And the answer is the way that happens is when we are loyal, when we are devoted to God. And, and our loyalty and devotion to God is is completely spotless and unquestioned. It is seamless. We aren't, we aren't loyal to God on Sunday and then we do whatever we're going to do during the week. No, it's every day, just like Daniel. We, uh, we find out some interesting things about Daniel's prayer life. In Daniel chapter 2, Daniel prays for revelation and interpretation. In Daniel chapter 6, Daniel prays uh, in defiance of the king's decree. In Daniel chapter 9, Daniel's prayer is based on confession and humility. Daniel chapter 10, uh, we read of the spiritual results of Daniel's prayers. And in Daniel 12, we read the final recorded prayer of Daniel. And we'll dig into that uh, in another time. But, but uh, as we read these passages, Daniel chapter 9, 1 through 19, and Daniel 10, 1 through 21, there are seven things that I want to 
share with you how Daniel teaches us to pray. In fact, the first one is Daniel's prayers came from his study of God's word. True prayer always begins with the work of the Holy Spirit in the heart of a believer. And on the human level, our burden for prayer may come by recognizing some urgent need or by the request of someone who says to us, please pray. <laughs> We we want to be people of prayer, just like Daniel. Well, what started Daniel praying this time is that uh, verses 1 and 2 of chapter 9 tell us that Daniel was pouring over Jeremiah's prophecy. And when he came to Jeremiah uh, 25, 12 and 29, 10, he discovered, he discovered that Israel's captivity in Babylon would last only 70 years. And, and after that, the Jews would be free to go home and and Daniel realized that it had been 68 years and there were only two years remaining. <laughs> when he discovered this, he put on sackcloth and gave himself to prayer. In other words, he was taking a special time and a special uh, commitment to deep prayer and intercession. Well, friends, uh, prayer is cooperating with God for the fulfillment of his will. When we pray, we don't change God's mind. We discover what his will is and we enter into praying for his will to be done. Just like the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done. And then that prayer becomes the channel through which God fulfills his will. So first of all, Daniel uh his prayers came from the study of God's word, and, and uh, may that happen in our lives too, that as we study the word, we will be led to various uh, kinds of prayer and, and various prayer requests. Second thing that I want you to see from these chapters is that Daniel's prayers reveal a true understanding of God. Uh, Daniel's prayers really reveal to us what God is like. Uh, in verse 4, Daniel uh, reveals to us that God is great and awesome. Also in 4, he talks about the faithfulness of God. In verse 7, he talks about and, and uh, his prayers reveal the righteousness and the fact that God is just. In verse 9, Daniel's prayers reveal that God is merciful and God is forgiving. In verses 11 and 14, Daniel's prayers reveal that God is the God of judgment. Verse 15, Daniel's prayers reveal that, that God is mighty. He is all powerful. There is nothing too hard for our God. <laughs> then in verses 6 through 19, we are reminded that God hears and answers prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. The revelation that God gave to Daniel is exactly what the rest of the Bible says about God. It wasn't something new, wasn't something Daniel made up. It was consistent with the Bible. Jesus said in John 14, 9, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Oh, friends, uh, we need to read the red words of Jesus and pray for his power to come on us and for us to be... Uh, for us to see that the description of the Father is found in who Jesus is and what Jesus did. A deep, true understanding of God we will find by studying the Word of God and by studying uh, who our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is. The third thing that I want you to see from this passage is that Daniel's prayers show us the deep burdens he carried. When we read verse 3, it makes us really reevaluate our own prayers. I want you to go back and look at that and see the determination of Daniel and see the preparation of Daniel and, and notice also the resolve of Daniel. Friends, uh, he starts out saying, O oh Lord. And then in his prayers, he starts saying, O oh Lord, our God. Daniel is crying out to God. Then he moves to that third and even deeper level where he says, Oh, God, come and help us. We need you. And I think sometimes, friends, 
we're we're too casual in our prayers. We it's okay to be passionate. It's okay to to uh, to get vocal and get loud in our prayers. And and I believe that that if you feel a burden to pray and to pray that way, then do it, please. From Daniel's example, we see that it's okay to get excited. It's okay to be passionate. And so we're going to follow his example. The fourth thing that I want you to see is that Daniel's prayers show us a deep awareness of shame and confession of sin. Friends, Jesus went to the cross so that all of our shame would be removed and that, that we would, yes, be able to, uh, when we sin, come to God and, and repent and confess and our sins would be immediately forgiven so that we don't have to carry shame. And God doesn't want you to carry shame anymore. If you, if you are carrying shame, uh, give it to God. Ask him to forgive you of whatever sins there might be outstanding. And friends, if you have prayed and asked God to forgive your sins, they are forgiven. That is a, that is a promise from God and you can you can trust him. He never he always keeps his promises. He never breaks his promises. He has promised to forgive our sins. Uh, if we confess and, and repent, our sins will be forgiven immediately. So Daniel, in his awareness of the shame and the sin of his people, identifies himself with his people. He says to God, God, they have sinned. And then he says, we have sinned. He identifies with his people. And he, he teaches us uh, that it's so important that we identify ourselves, not only with the need, but also with the sins of those that we are praying for. Moses did that in Exodus 32. Nehemiah, Nehemiah did it in Nehemiah 1. And in his prayer, Daniel describes the sins of his people. And we need to do that, friends. It's okay. In fact, uh, because we know that God forgives our sins and forgives them immediately, it's okay for us to confess our sins <laughs> to God and to and confess the sins of the church and, and confess the sins of the world and ask God to forgive us and ask God to forgive them, just like Daniel did. Okay, number five, Daniel's prayers are filled with passion and urgency. Uh, nothing vague about Daniel's prayers. I mean, he gets right to it. He cuts right through all the stuff and, and gets down to the need of the moment and, and prays for it. He prayed for God's blessing on the holy city, Jerusalem, and on the people of God. Well, friends, these prayers of Daniel show us how to pray for the church and the world. And I want to give you a list. So if you want to jot these down. On some note paper, please do. So first of all, prayers that we should be praying for the church. Okay. And the first one is the deep cleansing work of the Holy Spirit. The second one is for the church to return to faith in the authority and truth of the word of God. The third one is for the church to be clear and direct about preaching the gospel. And friends, when we do that, when we preach the gospel clearly and directly, it will bring people to repent and because the Holy Spirit is working in their lives and it will bring about revival both in us as individuals, as families, as neighborhoods, churches, as cities. And that's what we need, friends. Lastly, in praying for the church, pray for the members and attenders to live lives of holiness. Okay, that's my list for the church. Now let's, let me give you my list of, of how we should pray for the world. The first one is uh, to pray for people to be raised up to call the nation back to God. Our nation has drifted a long ways away from God, friends, and, and we need people to stand up and call her back to God. We need to also pray for those in high places to come to faith in Jesus. We need to also pray for the rise in sin and evil to be stopped and truth and honesty to be exalted to their high places again. Lastly, we need to pray for repentance of sin and faith toward Jesus Christ. Okay, those are my lists. Praying for the church and praying for the world. The sixth thing that I want you to see 
how Daniel teaches us to pray is that Daniel's prayers show us the true motive of prayer. Daniel asked God to bless his people, and he asked God to bless his holy city, and this is why he asked God to pray for those things. This was the motive behind Daniel's praying, and it is this. For your sake, O Lord, for your glory, God, Come and bless your people. Come and bless your holy city. Daniel's motive for prayer was for the glory of God, friends. And that's what God is calling you and I to have as our motive for prayer. The seventh thing that we want to see from these passages about how Daniel teaches us to pray is that Daniel's prayers show us what happens when we pray. And there's some interesting things that happen. Daniel chapter 10 verse 12 tell us when we pray, our prayer is heard immediately. Immediately, friends. The, as soon as we begin praying, God is listening to our prayer. The answer may be delayed like Daniel's was, but God hears our prayers immediately. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, it tells us when we pray, we set in motion a spiritual conflict. The devil does not want our prayers to be answered. The devil doesn't want your prayers to be answered, especially if the motive is right, and especially if your heart is right, and especially if you're praying in line with God's will. Satan doesn't want your prayers to be answered. When we pray, the forces of evil are aroused which explains why some of the answers to our prayers are delayed. In Daniel chapter 10, verses 12, 18, and 19, tell us when we pray, our fear is removed and we are given the strength that we need for the day or the challenge. The Bible and, and often modern Christian life tell us about this over and over and over. When we pray, God takes our fears away and puts his peace in their place. And, and we're also given the strength. We're given revelation. We're given everything, all the tools and all the gifts and blessings that we need to be able to do God's will. God gives us boldness. To, he, God gives us a fearlessness. And when we pray, we're given the strength we need to do what God wants us to do. So friends, let's let's put it all into practice right now and, and let's first of all pray for the church. Will you join me? Will you follow along with me? Let's pray for the cleansing work of the Holy Spirit. Father, would you come and bring the cleansing of the Holy Spirit that we all need, Lord, every day. We need that fresh cleansing, God. Lord, uh, clean out our hearts and our minds and our lives and and may we seek after you with all of our hearts, God. Remove those things from our hearts and minds and from our lives, Lord, that are not pleasing to you. We pray also, Lord, that your church will return to faith in the authority and truth of the word of God. Lord, may we find our truth. May we know that the truth that we need for everyday living is found in the word of God. Lord, and may we line up our lives, our families, our churches by your word, God. And Lord, and may we not uh, try to water down your word or try to compromise your word in order to fit in with the world or with our thoughts. No, Lord, may we align our thoughts and may we come to understand that the world needs to align itself with the word of God. Lord, we also pray that, that you will help us to be clear and direct in our in our sharing of the gospel. Lord, may we lay it out simply and, and, and Lord, may we lay it out with passion and with the deep uh, desire that we have in our hearts for people to come to faith in Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will bring people to you by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we also pray for the members and the attenders of all the churches to live lives of holiness. Now, friends, let's pray for the world, okay? Father, we pray for people to be raised up to call the nation back to you. Raise them up, God. 
Lord, we pray for those in high places to come to faith in Jesus. All of our governors and mayors, Lord, all of our city councils, school board members, Lord, from the, from the dog catcher all the way to the president, Lord, all of our leaders, senators and representatives to come to faith in Jesus. Lord, then to love the word of God and, and be drawn to it. We pray for the rise of sin and evil to be stopped and for truth and honesty to be exalted to their high places again. We pray, Lord, for the repentance of sin and for people to have faith in you, God, and to trust in you, Lord. We pray for our cities. We pray for our nation to draw near to you, God. We pray for families. We pray for parents to rise up and be Jesus lovers and Jesus followers. We pray these things in Jesus' name, Lord. And I pray for those watching this video right now. Lord, if, if there are those, and I, and I want to scratch that word if, Lord, I believe there are those watching this video that have not yet put their faith in Jesus. They have not yet asked you, Lord, to come into their lives and be their Lord and Savior. And I pray, Lord, right now that as they think about that, as they are prompted to do that by your Holy Spirit, Lord, I pray that they will pray that prayer and be drawn to you, God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, friends. It is almost Thanksgiving, and our church is getting ready to give out uh, free Thanksgiving baskets with a Thanksgiving meal in them. So if you know of anyone that would like one of those, please contact our church. Contact us on Facebook. Uh, Go on our website, uh, call us on the phone, 503-287-4825, and uh, we pray that you are blessed, and we pray that you will have a wonderful Thanksgiving. God bless you.